Hello, everybody, and welcome to lesson three, which is starting page 11 in your orange book. And guess what? All of lesson three will be in class. So we're going to do this together. So right now, all you're going to write on the top of your page is in class. Okay, so this one, then we're going to do this experiment. We can only do it in class together, but you have to have it done. So if you're absent, you can hopefully get the notes from somebody. Zoom is really hard to do the experiments yourself at home. So hopefully you'll make it to class or you'll have to get the notes from somebody. There's one page I'm actually going to skip and I didn't look which one it is. We'll, we'll add skip. I believe it's probably this one, maybe even this one. Rolling two number cubes. Yeah, we're gonna do this one in class and probably skip this one. Yep, skipping this one. Okay. There's quite a few pages and then we're doing this one in class. And fair and unfair, we're doing that one. And then the next page is where we're starting our homework today. So I will assign this page. There's going to be the four next page, the next four pages are homework for this particular homework. And I will show you from each page a few problems so you get started. The rest is yours to fill in. So these skill builders, they are um, they are a review of, of um, things you might have already learned. Hopefully you have. I know we've done these, so this sign means less than. So make sure you write that down so you remember. You have to decide, is it less than, equal, or greater than? So we have to simplify both sides and bring it down to one number. This one says negative two minus nine, which is the same as negative two plus negative nine. And this negative two plus negative nine, both of them are negative 11. And that means you have an equal sign here. Okay, so you simplify one side and then the other and you see what the deal is with the numbers. The next one I want to show you is number six. The rest is all your job to do. A double negative minus subtracting a negative means you add the opposite. So you're adding these two, 29 plus 13. And this is a multiplication problem. Negative five times negative eight is positive 40. And 29 plus 13 is 42. And this side is 40, so that means it's greater than. Remember the mouth, if you remember learning that maybe from some elementary school teacher, this is like a crocodile mouth and it always opens toward the bigger number. So the, the mouth eats the bigger number. Yeah, the smaller number gets the arrow. 
All right, so those need to be filled in by you. See if you can figure those out. And now I will show you, this is called a complex fraction. A complex fraction is you divide a fraction divided by a fraction. So the way you're going to rewrite that is 5 eighth divided by 3 fourths. That's what that means. This means division. Okay, and dividing fractions, it's no lie, flip the second and multiply. So the first fraction stays the same, but this, you turn this into multiplying and you flip the fraction. So this is the same as that. And now you can do two things. You have two different strategies you're supposed to show. The first one you could cross cancel like the eight and the four and then multiply the top, multiply the bottom, or the one I'm going to do, and you will have to do the other one over here. You can just simply multiply the top, multiply the bottom, and then reduce your fraction. So when you reduce your fraction, you make it to where you divide by a number that goes into 20 and also into 24. In the first number that pops into my head is four. Four goes into 20 and four goes into 24. So that turns into five and that turns into six. So there's your answer. Now your job is to do the same. You should have the same answer using a different strategy, which was cross canceling. See if you can figure that out over here, yeah? So use cross canceling because it says find two different strategies. Okay. And then you will also do number nine, but I will show you number 10, okay? So this is about proportions. So I'm going to say set up a proportion. So an, a proportion are two equal fractions. Make sure I'm, yep. Okay, Joaquin drove 102 miles in one and a quarter hour. So the first thing we're going to do is identify what are our two units of measurement, miles and hours? Okay, so we're going to write a fraction. I choose to put miles on top and hours on the bottom. You can also put the hours on top and the miles on the bottom. You can switch this, but we gotta keep it straight. Once we start with one, you gotta keep it that way. So we have 102 miles and we have one and a quarter. I do not like this fraction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change hours into minutes because the fraction puzzles me. And I like whole numbers without fractions. So I'm going to say, I make that minutes. And that would mean one hour has 60 minutes and a quarter hour has 15 minutes, 60 plus, 60 plus 15 is 75 minutes. So here's my first proportion. And that has to equal to, what is this, his rate in miles per hour? We want one hour. Well, I know one hour has 60 minutes. Remember I changed to minutes and we wanna know how far he can go in 60 minutes, yeah, per one hour. So there's my proportion. In place of question mark, I write an X for a variable. So now I have to find how many miles in 60 minutes. So that's called a proportion. And to solve, I'll do the cross product, 102 times 60 is 6,120. 
75 times x, 75x. And then, so I divide by 75. Use your calculator. This is a division problem. And the answer should be 81.6. Remember X is miles because it's on top. So we can say he drives eighty one point six miles per hour because sixty minutes is the same as one hour. Yeah, I only changed it because I did not like the fraction. So when I see that, I usually change it to a different unit to make it easier to work with. But I kept it 60 over here as well. So therefore, I know 60 minutes is the same as one hour. And your job is to do number nine, same thing. So write a proportion and solve. Or you can do it any other way you like. You can chunk it up into chunks. Yeah, 15 magazines. She sells 15 magazines in three fourths of an hour. That's 45 minutes, right? What is her rate in magazine sales per hour? How many magazines does she sell each hour? if she keeps going like this, okay? So this is your first page homework. And that was page, by the way, 20. These skill builders and review, they're very good for you to do. And now we're on page 21, this is also homework. And I will just get you started and you will fill in the rest, okay? Ted is going on a road trip and needs to fill up his gas tank. He puts 12 gallons in his car and he pays 38.40. Complete the double number line diagram below to represent this information. Okay, we've done those before, I believe. So the double number line help you to chunk up and make this into chunks. And you need a calculator to do this. Otherwise, it's going to take you forever to do it. So on the top, you have the cost, and on the bottom, you have the gallons of gas. If you don't, if you pay nothing, you get zero gallons of gas. So zero, zero is usually the start, okay? Notice how many increments do we have from zero to here, to here, to here. There are four increments, and they're equally spaced. So that means we can divide this by four to get the cost of each increment. However, we need to figure out, oh, 12 is here. 138 goes with 12. Notice again, there's four even increments. So if you divide 12 divided by four, you get three gallons for each increment. So you always add three. And then we have 15. I'm adding three, 18, 21, and 24 gallons. So that's the gallon increments always going up by three. I want you to also find what's called the unit price for one gallon. We're gonna find that, that's an important one. And you know that one, you can figure out everything else. So that's about right here. All right, now let's find the cost. We got four equal increments. Yeah, one, two, three, four. And we divide our this number by four, we get the cost for each of these increments. So when, it, when you take 38.40 divided by four, you will get 960. And that means each increment you add 960. When you add 960, use your calculator. Check out if I'm doing this right. 
These are your cost, your dollars. How much does it cost? So 15 gallons would cost you $48. And 24 gallons cost 76.80. And see now that's double of 38.40 because this is double the amount of gallons. So I'm going to erase this so it's not in the way. And also this. Now let's find the unit price. So if three gallons cost 9.60, you find the unit price by doing 960 divided by three, and that would make it 320. So that's your unit price. I'm gonna make it red. So one gallon costs $3.20. One gallon of gas is $3.20. Makes sense, it's about right. Okay, now we can answer all of these questions by just matching it up. What is the cost of six gallons? You see, 1920. How much gas can did Ted buy for 5760? Okay, I'll go to my price, 5760, 18 gallons. What is the cost per one gallon unit price? It's right here. How much gas can Ted buy for 80 cents? Okay. Well, that's for you to figure out. Okay, let's see if you can answer all of these. Now your job is to make your own double number line. Okay, so here you do, you read the question and you fill in your increments. Make sure you add the unit price. Okay, your unit price is for one gallon. It's again, He's filling up his gas tank, but this time the cost is different because he's at a different gas station. So now your job is to fill in all of these numbers down here. Those are your gallons of gas. Use your clue they give you. So that's a nine. Nine gallons for $25.20. Your job is to fill in all these numbers and the cost up here. Right, and then make sure you uh, find the unit price. Unit price is always the price for one. And then you will answer all of these questions. Page 21, okay, double number lines. It's good for proportions. So next page is also homework. You can use a calculator here. You do definitely need a calculator for this. This is a division problem, top divided by bottom. Don't be surprised if your answer is bigger than you expected because it's really saying how many times does 0 0.07 go into 14.07? So it's a lot. So you're going to get a bigger number. Anytime you, sub, you divide by a very small number, your answer gets bigger, it's the opposite. This one, I, you will do yourself, but I'll show you this one. So you're subtracting two and, five, two and five, six minus eight and three fourths. I like to change them to improper fractions. Watch, two times six is 12 plus five is 17 over six minus eight times four is 20. No, eight times four is 32. 32 plus three is 35. 35 over four is the same as that. Your common denominator is 12. Six goes into 12 twice, so I have to make that a 34. Four goes into 12 three times. So I have to make um, the top number three times 35. Three times 35 
is 105. So I always draw an arrow to show where I'm working. So now we have a common denominator, 12. 34 take away 105. And we have negative seven because it's a bigger number take away from a smaller number is a negative. And now I'm changing it back to a mixed number. 12 goes into 70, I believe six times. Negative, the negative stays. I think it's six, what's six times 12? Nope, it's only five times because six times 12 is 72. That's too much. So we got five whole numbers, five times 12 is 60, I believe, right? So there's a 10 difference to make it to 70. So negative five and 10, 12 is the same as negative five and I can divide by two, five, six. And that's my final answer and I'm sticking to it. I think that's correct. Five times 12 is 60 plus 10 is 70, yep. And this one is again a division problem. So remember you you make this into fractions and you multiply and flip this one, that's 11. This would be 11 over 10. So it's 10 over 11. Dividing fractions, it's no lie, flip the second and multiply. So that division turns into a multiplication. You got to flip the second fraction. All right, so see if you can figure that one out. You could cross cancel or you can multiply top, multiply bottom, but then you have to reduce your fraction. All right, so those two are for you to do. Did we put homework on top? Yeah. And number five, Felix went to the grocery store. He started with $24 and then when he left, he had only $8 left write an equation to show how much Felix spent, which is the X at the grocery store. So that's your job. And B, then you solve the equation mentally. How much did Felix spend at the store? If he came in with $24 and he only had $8 left, but this equation is important, use X. Now, after that, you need to solve these three equations and find the number for x that makes the left side equal to the right side. Okay, what 8 plus what is 15? 0 0.3 times what is 2.4? A number divided by 4 is 2.5. What's the number? Or you can do divide to undo the equation by simply doing the opposite, okay? And then number nine, your job, okay? So that's page 22 homework. And then next page also, 23. We have garbage here, garbage and um, Let's look at this chart. This is already coming with probability. Hmm. Oh, no, 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 this is not probability. This is again, proportions, still talking about proportion. A waste company can process three quarter tons of garbage every one and a half hours. Fill in the table below using the garbage to hours ratio. See a ratio is a comparison of two numbers. Usually we use it, we write it as a fraction one to four. So let's look, we got three quarter tons every one and a half hours. I'm going to use a picture for chunking. So chunking means I'm going to draw three fourths in 
three chunks. So the first three out of, so that's one fourth and one fourth and one fourth is three fourths. That's the garbage. This will help me visualize the, and then I will do the hours. So the hours, I'm gonna chunk them up to one and a half hours. I can make also three chunks and call each one a half an hour. Half and half and half is one and a half. One fourth and one fourth and one fourth is three fourths. Do you see how I kind of divided that up? So now I know I can match them up and I see visually that one fourth garbage, ton of guard, this is tons by the way, a quarter ton of garbage takes a half an hour, right? And then a half a ton of garbage, that's two of these chunks, must take two of these chunks, which is a half and a half is one hour. Does that make sense kind of? Then I have one and a half hours. Well, that's what they gave me, which is three fourths, all right? And then I have one ton of garbage how long does it take to collect one ton of garbage? Hmm. Well, let's see if I can find some. Oh, look at, I'm going to compare. I'm going to make this green. I'm going to compare this and this. A half and one, that's twice as much. Do you see how that's twice of a half? Then that means this answer has to be twice this one. So therefore, I know this takes two hours. You see how I make a connection somehow that's easy? I, this connection doesn't look easy for me. Three quarter and one, that's hard to do, but I'm looking for something that's easy to connect. And you can do that. I'm gonna erase this. Uh, next we have tons of garbage, two tons of garbage, how many hours? Again, I'm going to make a connection between, I'm looking for easy connections. Two and one is an easy connection. Two is twice as much. Again, right? Twice. So that means it has to be twice the number of hours. So that means it has to be four. And you can pick any of the pairs to make that connection. They don't have to be next to each other. The good thing about proportion, if you do it right, any of these, if you see a connection with numbers that helps you to find the other number, do it. And now we have the last one, two and a half. Let's see. Hmm, where can I make a connection? How about this one? At one half and two and a half, this is five times the amount of garbage. Do you see how one half goes into two and a half five times? There's five chunks of one half in this one. So that means it has to be five times the hours as well. So one times five is five. So there's an easy way to figure all these numbers out. And now it's asking to make a chart or a graph with these numbers. So when you do your graph, you look, this is your X axis, which is your input, tons of garbage, and it's down here. I'll label it X and Y, because that's how you're going to do it later on in math. And the output or the Y axis is the number of hours. Now your job is to figure out what is a good scale. 
Remember, when we make a scale, we want to look at the highest numbers and see how far do we have to go. The scale is can be different on each axis. So on the x axis, I have to go to two and a half. So I'll go a little beyond. I'll go to three. And I'm going to cut it into one, two, three, four. Because that gives me a good, this is zero, by the way, a quarter, two quarter, three quarter, one. Two quarters is the same as one half. So see how I can, now that I went by, used four little tick marks for one, it's easy for me to put those fractions on there. So, it, but I really only want to put on one, two, and three. I'm not going to write all of these numbers here. It's too many numbers. You just have to estimate. I only wanted you to show why I picked four little squares as one. On the y-axis, I have to go up to five. Notice five. It's my highest number on the output. It's called the output. Five, I will also go by four. Make sure you count four each time. Make no mistake. Oops, see, I just made a mistake here. That's a good, did I make a mistake here too? Notice I already made two mistakes. It's a good exercise to train your eyeballs to make sure you count correctly. And that's as far as we have to go. And now I'm going to plot this point, one quarter and one half. It's right here because that's one half. That's one quarter, two quarters, three quarters. And now I want you guys to plot these points and I want you to do it on your own and see if you get a straight line. It should be a straight line because proportions always make a straight line and they always go through zero zero that's called the origin and you if it doesn't go through that point you made a mistake because what does that mean zero zero that's going to be a question on your right here what does zero zero represent in the context of the garbage so you have to answer that and um then you will also answer number five. But first, I want you to turn off your um, video lesson. Uh, pause it, I should say. Don't turn it off. And plot the points yourself. And then use a ruler to connect them. And then you turn it back on. OK, when you're back, and you should have some, you should have a graph that looks like this exactly and then you would want to take a ruler but make sure you use a ruler which i don't have it so i'm not going to connect my and you will see that these points are all in a straight line if one of them is off the straight line you made a mistake okay so look if you want to find the other points that are in here that are not there notice that if you go up two and over one you will always get another point on the line so what does that mean? Up two over one, it's like steps. You see that? Up two over one. Well, up two means you're going on the hours, one half an hour. Over one means a quarter ton of garbage. So every half an hour, they process a quarter ton of garbage. Another half an hour, another quarter ton of garbage and so on and so forth. That's what these steps mean. By the way, the word for these is called slope. Later on, you learn about that. And you can answer these questions right here. Okay, that's page 23. And I believe this is my homework for this time. And then we'll finish up on page 24 next time. So. 
Good luck with that. See you later.